everyone a really warm welcome back to the channel well a couple of folks have asked what fridge I've got and what made me choose it so I thought it might be sensible to have a little chat about that uh, and the sort of things I was looking for and uh, whether it's been any good how long I've owned it that sort of thing and whether I would buy the same thing again so here we go <laughs> So this is the fridge, it's a Dometic CFX35 and it's actually pretty ancient now <laughs> actually because we've had this longer than we've had the caravan. Uh, we bought it as a second fridge when we had the trailer tent and back then I think it was the only brand of this sort of top loading compressor fridge that you could actually buy so uh, obviously you could get camper van fridges that were were front opening but I'm pretty sure that this was the only brand of top opening one nowadays of course there are lots of cheaper copies uh, that seem to review very well indeed actually so I've put some of the links to those in the description below as well as the links to this particular one or the new model of this particular one given how ancient this one is and it might look like a cool box, but actually it's a full on compressor fridge. So in other words, it works exactly the same as the fridge in your house does. Um, not the same as the fridge in, if you've got a caravan or a motorhome, you've probably got a three way fridge that is gas um, and mains when you're parked up and when it's on tow or when the engine is running in your motorhome, then it can run off the 12 volts. But that is what's called an absorption fridge. And one day I might try and do an episode on the differences between the two. So they work differently in terms of how they cool, uh, but also they have pluses and minuses, obviously, in terms of um, that uh, method of working. So what's good and what's bad about it. So this one is, as a compressor, it's a little bit noisier. So you can certainly hear it clicking in and out and, and the compressor running up and, and the um, motor running within the fridge itself. But, but you can set a specific temperature that you want because it's got it's actually got a thermostat built in so can you believe it in a fridge this small in the back of your van you can determine precisely the temperature you want i think this one goes from minus 22 to plus i don't know plus 15 or something i don't think it works as a proper oven type warming box um but you can go all the way down to deep frozen. So minus 22 is good enough for anything. I mean, even some of that really posh uh, ice cream stuff that needs cooling to very cold temperatures indeed. Anyway, it's a compressor fridge, so it works in the same way as the house one, either on 12 volts or 240 volts. I don't know that they all work on either of those, but this one certainly does either 12 volts or 240. If you're looking for a normal cool box, actually, um, one of the best ones we had was one of these uh, serious isotherm things and it, it promised to keep ice cold for five days and indeed some of the ice that was in there was still frozen at the end of five days so that was pretty much fantastic but of course um, in that sort of environment you always get slightly damp and humid air and of course some of the ice is melting so very quickly you end up with, with a puddle of icy water um, and the ice cubes themselves and so the way you use those things is by keeping all your stuff in Tupperware in the box and whenever you lift something out then you expect it to be quite damp and wet on the outside so you know it works for cooling but it's a little bit difficult to live with sometimes compared to a fridge. Um, I've owned powered cool boxes before and the ones we had have had have been absolutely awful. Uh, I mean they're badly insulated at the top because basically as a cooling box it's just working by um, driving the air over a set of cooling fins with a fan sucking it past and so it's the, the process of evaporation and the movement of air that does the cooling and so those cooling boxes can only cool to a certain number of degrees below ambient so that's usually about 20 degrees below ambient and you can control the fan speed but um, there's certainly no thermostat in in the ones we've owned anyway maybe modern ones are a bit better but uh, in back before I bought this we had uh, one or two of those and they were absolutely disastrous anyway the other problem with coolers of course is if they're just uh, cooling below ambient you know if you're at 
20 degrees or something and it's cooling 20 degrees below ambient, then it's going to freeze everything that's inside. So you, you have very little control over the temperature that's in there and it, can, it just fluctuates uh, basically with, with the ambient temperature outside at just 20 be degrees below it or so, which means um, you end up freezing cucumbers. And I am particularly good at freezing cucumbers, even in absorption fridges. And absorption fridges, so the, the sort of ones that you find in caravans and motorhomes, work in a very similar way, so cooling below ambient, uh, but because they're much better insulated than the little, little sort of cheap cool boxes that you can buy, um, then they're not quite so susceptible to uh, what's going on outside. But I've still frozen cucumbers in the caravan fridge, and in fact uh, a three-way uh, mobile camping one we owned as well, I've also frozen cucumbers in multiple times. So. I've learnt my lesson there to be very careful where those sort of things get left, especially overnight, uh, because who wants to freeze the milk or the cucumbers? Anyway. So personally, if you don't want to justify the cost of a proper fridge, then I'd probably go for one of those extreme cool boxes because I think they work pretty well, actually, in terms of keeping a pretty stable environment. And uh, you just have to get used to using them with uh, Tupperware and so on to make sure all your stuff isn't swimming in a slosh of ice. I slushy, I guess. So as I said, this CFX35 can be set to maintain a temperature anything from, uh, should I say minus 22? Yes, minus 22 up to, I think it's plus 15 or plus 18, something like that. And it's hyper efficient. Uh, so actually the time that we went down to Cornwall with just the van, we had the, the fridge hooked up to the Jackery 1000 and I think we only yeah we only used the the jackery 1000 for the fridge and we got to uh at least four and a half probably four and three quarter almost five days with the jackery 1000 running that fridge without the engine turning over without uh, the jackery getting any more charge from anywhere else so hyper efficient you know means we can keep the fridge going for for multiple days um even being completely off grid now the efficiency of these things is of course helped by being a top loader so uh, when you're opening the top up cold air as you know sinks so the cold air tends to stay at the bottom of the the box itself so as you're lifting up then you're not losing any of that cold air that's in in there already whereas if you've got a front uh, side opening fridge then obviously every time you open the door all the cold air then spills out and goes across the floor you've probably felt that uh, sensation of getting very cold toes when somebody opens the fridge next to you that's because all that cold air is just spilling further down across the floor and out of the van so efficiency is certainly helped by that and the fantastic insulation that's around the sides and the base of the box the lid itself isn't that massively insulated i think you know it's very lightweight it's just a couple of layers of thick plastic possibly with some foam inside but nowhere near as solid as the other sides and it doesn't need to be uh, because cold air sinks and just stays in the fridge all the time. I guess the other thing for this particular fridge is it also acts as the Christmas overspill fridge um, if I don't want to, to use the caravan fridge uh, it can just be brought into the house and be loaded up and set going so you know, it's proving reasonably good value for us because it's not just for camping uh, but for house needs as well. Now, obviously, a downside of being a top loader is that you have to pack really strategically. You know, it's super annoying to have to unpack everything if the thing you want is the thing that is right down in the bottom of the box. So you, the downside is you do need to think a lot more carefully about where you put things and how you stack them together. And uh, ours has a, a divider piece that sits in the middle of the basket so that you can keep, say, drinks on one side and then uh, foods on the other side to, to make it a little bit easier to find what you're looking for. Like all fridges, it's pretty heavy, uh, especially when it's full, of course. But uh, when we've been tent camping with it, thankfully, uh, it's been in a place where we can drive the car to and just leave the car next to the tent. So that was easy. So um, it could be just popped onto a trolley for scout camp, which was the one place we couldn't take the car onto, onto the pitch with. We had to trolley it round, um, but that wasn't too bad as long as you get people on either side. Um, but it's certainly not something that you want to be doing regularly, um, shifting it around. So it does have handles, but don't think of it as particularly portable. Now, of course, the other massive downside is cost. And these things are phenomenally expensive. However, uh, as I said, I think we've had ours for six years now and it doubles up as the overspill fridge for Christmas in our house. So 
although it was very expensive to buy i think over the longer run for us it's it's proved pretty good value for money um, because it's lasted so long and because it gets used quite a lot so i think uh, the value is quite high even if the initial cost is super high as well all right so just a short little ramble um, uh, my thoughts about uh, this particular compressor fridge that we've got if I were buying it now, would I buy it again? Well, it was very expensive, but it has lasted a long time and it has been used a reasonable amount. So it does present reasonably good value. Um, these days though, of course, there are so many knockoffs and copies that I would be sorely, sorely tempted to go and uh, pick up one of those because uh, they seem to review extremely well. And if it does the same job, then unfortunately, the market leader always ends up losing out, don't they? The other thing I would consider, the, the one thing that makes it slightly less flexible than I'd really like is that, of course, the whole box has to be set to the same temperature. And sometimes it would be handy to be able to have two temperatures. Perhaps uh, if we're heading off for a day out in the absolute middle of nowhere, we might want to take some ice cream with us, for example, or something like that. And so it would be helpful i think if uh i mean obviously the bigger ones you can you have two different compartments so it's got two different lids and you've got two different compressors so you can set two different temperatures so i think i would be quite tempted to buy two small ones actually uh, because there is enough space down in the gap here between the two front seats in the bus to get one of the the small um i'm not sure if it's 15 or 18 liter ones so i'd be tempted to have one at the front here and another one in the back and then they can be set to to whatever temperature you need or a lot of the time you know we don't need that whole space if it's only a day out then we can make do with one that's very much smaller and use a lot less power so that would be good even though it's very efficient you know why use the power if you if you don't need to so that's what i think you know i think this is a fantastic investment it works really well it works much better than a cool box um, and so for me that justifies the extra investment for the thing because you get to use it more and it's a whole lot easier it makes life much easier uh, but yeah i would be very tempted to think about two smaller ones anyway thanks for tuning in uh, i hope that was useful for anybody wondering about fridges and and wondering what to do uh, these things of course work in cars just as well as uh, vans so great for a, a, a sort of thing to keep in the boot of the car if you want to keep all your food and drinks at a very sensible temperature uh, rather than having to worry about what the cool box is up to so thanks for tuning in uh, do do the uh, thumbs up thing i must stop rambling and so that's the end <laughs> thanks so much guys i'll see you soon bye for now see ya